This lecture is continuation on the topic of antacids. So I have a, my favorite picture of digestive tract. So here is your mouth, vestes, esophagus. Between esophagus and the stomach, there is low esophageal sphincter. And then the rest of small intestine, large intestine. Uh, and here is example of antacids. They come in form of salts, either calcium or magnesium, aluminum. So what are possible side effects that can happen if you take antacids? Uh, and if you take them for a long time, couple outcomes. Outcome number one is just from the fact of neutralizing of hydrochloric acid. So you remember, recall from my previous lecture of part one, that uh, stomach is producing hydrochloric acid. Look at the chemical reaction. So what you do, you, you uh, combine hydrochloric acid plus antacid. So you put that, let's say, Tom's right here into your mouth, okay? Uh, I will explain, uh, let's say, calcium carbonate, calcium CO3, here, okay? Simple chemical reaction will go in this direction, so you form calcium chloride, calcium chloride, and carbonic acid, H2CO3. Carbonic acid is very unstable and immediately dissociates into water and uh, gas. CO2 and that by the way that gas you show in you saw in previous videos in previous video that it's uh, basically bubbles that's formed on the surface when I combine uh, vinegar with uh, baking soda so that was uh, just example there so result of this reaction you have salt you have water and you have gas which was clinical which is clinically expressed in our body as a burping uh, and flatulence. So you have a less acid in the, in the stomach. Hooray, I'm very happy. So you have l less acid. As a result, you have less acid reflex, as less acid re reflex, so less inflammation here in the esophagus, um, in, uh, irritation and less inflammation. So I'm very happy. No, I am not happy at all. A stomach is producing hydrochloric acid for very good reason. We need acid to digest protein protein and the protein is basically a long long chain of amino acids so when you look under the microscope that's how it looks like protein is a chain this is amino acid and this is amino acid combined this uh, so that's long very long chain so let's say this one kind of amino acid this is the other one this is the third one this is the fourth one so Okay, what happened? Hydrochloric acid breaks these connections. As the connections are broken, so you break protein into individual amino acids. And the rule is only individual amino acid can get through the digestive tract and into your bloodstream. And here is your bloodstream. The long chain protein cannot go through the digestive tract. It's actually pathological process if long chain uh, ended up in, um, in, uh, from through the digestive tract in your bloodstream, okay? So only individual amino acid get from the digestive tract in the bloodstream. And here it is, your individual amino acid. And that individual amino acid goes into the cell, goes into the tissues, and that's what we build. Out of the protein that we ate here, let you say protein, you had a protein here. You put the protein into your mouth in form of meat, fish, nuts and seeds, um, tofu, whatever, whatever you like. So you break that long chain into individual amino acid. Individual amino acids get broken, get incorporated into your bloodstream, and you build your um, your tissues. So what can you build out of a protein? Several hormones could be uh, made. Uh, immune system uh, is making antibody. So if you create a situation when you have less hydrochloric acid, so the consequences of that are numerous. So every single uh, body part that is incorporates amino acids could be depleted. So a weaker immune system. A weaker immune system. Um, where else it could be incorporated? So uh, it could be uh, muscles, 
muscles that we use for exercise. It could be cardiac muscle. Uh, how about um, the protein that in the bones? Let me give you example. So here is a, let's suppose a bone. Let me draw a nice bone. Okay, this is the bone. Okay, and we know that bone is as built basically calcium, but calcium cannot sit in the bone, like in the air. It has to have some kind of mesh where it's going to be sitting. This, this mesh is exactly, is connective tissues, and they are made out of individual amino acids. So the individual amino combined here, and then calcium sits here, and that's what is your bone is made out of. So if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid to break down long protein absorb amino acids so what you're going to have you will have less mesh in the bones to calcium to sit up on on that as a result osteopenia osteopenia or osteoporosis osteopenia okay how about if this is let's say it's a joint some kind of joint okay so and it's uh, the other bone is here it's the other bone Okay. Usually, it's a, if it's knee, between two bones, you have a cushion, and that cushion is made out of connective tissues. Connective tissues, nothing else but a combination of amino acids, and here it is, your long chain protein, they are here. As you walk, and you bang on this knee, so you constantly destroy it. You have to, then you have to replace it. So you have to put amino acids here, amino acids in order to restore that. If you don't have enough amino acid, what happens, you don't restore, you create osteoarthritis. So or you contribute to osteoarthritis. So that is example, uh, only simple example, how um, decreased concentration due to neutralization of hydrochloric acid can contribute to several different conditions such as weak immune system, osteopenia, and osteoporosis. I am. I don't have enough time in this video, but in the next video, part three, I will explain what can happen actually from the fact when you are taking extra calcium, or would you take extra magnesium, or you will take extra aluminum. See you at uh, Antacids part three. Thank you so much.